Congressman Pete Hookstra is on the other end of our line. His long history there in Michigan's second house district, one of the most conservative districts in the state. And uh, he's with us this morning. Good to talk to you, sir. Hey, good to be with you. Thank you. There's a story by Nathan Hurst, the Detroit News Washington Bureau chief, this morning saying that uh, you are the favorite right now to uh, be asked to run with Rick Snyder as lieutenant governor. Have you, have you heard anything, any noise like that? I've heard lots of noise, but I've had no discussions uh, with Rick uh, or anybody on his team about uh, anything like that. So uh, it's just a lot of uh, Lansing, and I guess it's a lot of Washington and Michigan chatter. But no, there's been, uh, there have been no discussions uh, of that nature at all. He did ask for your support, though, Rick Snyder? Uh, he asked for my support uh, a week ago at the Unity Lunch, and we said that uh, sometime over the next uh, week or two weeks uh, we take the opportunity and sit down together and see exactly how that would work out and uh, what we could do and those types of things. We've not had the opportunity to sit down yet. Nathan Hurst says that Snyder uh, lacks the conservative chops that some GOP insiders think he needs to win in November. Would you agree with that? I mean, uh, far be it for me to tell uh, Rick Snyder how to run a campaign. Uh, obviously, Rick ran a very successful campaign and uh, won the Republican gubernatorial nomination. Conventional wisdom uh, would say that uh, he's got to strengthen his, uh, you know, his flank on the right to make sure that uh, the conservative uh, part of the party is uh, excited and energized about the ticket, uh, that they will get involved in grassroots efforts, and that they will. Uh, you know that they'll come out and work for uh, work for his ticket. So that is con- that that would be the conventional wisdom. Now Rick ran a very unconventional uh, primary campaign and uh, was successful. And so it'll be very interesting to see exactly what kind of uh, campaign Rick runs this fall, and uh, also you know uh, this first decision that he makes about lieutenant governor. Uh, how he makes it, who he picks, uh, and when he picks it. He's in a bit of a tricky spot, isn't he? Because he ran that primary campaign as an outsider. In fact, he very often took shots at, uh, you know, career politicians. And then that's the part that he seems to need the most to beef up his campaign, to get people confident that he can work in the legislative system. Somebody you know who knows how the legislative system works. Doesn't he surrender the mantle of being the outsider by picking a running mate who is an insider? I don't think so. No? I mean, I think what uh, the reason I don't is I think everybody recognizes that he has to start building bridges into Lansing because uh, ultimately uh, when he wins and becomes uh, the governor-elect and then the governor of Michigan, he will be part of the political process. He, you know, uh, you know, And then he will be the ultimate insider. He will be the governor. And so you know, he can't stay the outsider forever. And he's going to, uh, and people recognize that he's going to have to start building those connections into Lansing for him to be an effective governor. Is there any chance you two could take a bike ride together soon and get this settled? Uh, the, uh, uh, hey, who knows? This is uh, the ball is in. Uh, you know, at least uh, at least this morning, the ball is in Rick's court. Uh, has been since the election, and uh, that's where it will stay until. Uh, uh, until he decides that he's going to start moving it along. Do you think you would make a good lieutenant governor? Oh, hey, I don't. I uh, I don't know. I'd have to really think about uh, whether that uh, is something that I would want to do. I think, uh, obviously, with the experience that I've had in uh, in Congress uh, and in the legislative process, I think uh, it's a job that it, that people with my kind of background could go out uh, and they could do it and they could do it effectively. It also depends exactly on you know, what kind of role Rick Snyder would envision for his lieutenant governor. We've seen, uh, you know, someone like Dick Postumus, who I think was very involved with John Engler. Uh, and then you've seen people like John Cherry, who really uh, uh, people have a lot of respect for and thought could be a big asset to Jennifer Granholm, who hasn't been used very much at all. Um, I didn't realize that uh, Dan Quayle, the former vice president, his son Ben is running for Congress out in uh, Arizona. And uh, I want to play this uh, campaign commercial just to get your reaction. This is Ben Quayle's recent television commercial. Barack Obama is the worst president in history. And my generation will inherit a weakened country. Drug cartels in Mexico, tax cartels in D.C. What's happened to America? I love Arizona. 
I was raised right. Somebody has to go to Washington and knock the hell out of the place. My name's Ben Quayle, and I approve this message. <laughs> what do you make of that spot? Well, I'm, I'm pretty familiar. Uh, I, I know something about uh, that race. It's a very crowded field. There could be six, seven people in that race, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, they're running for the, uh, the seat that's currently held by John Shattuck. Obviously, uh, he's going to cut through the clutter uh, <laughs> with that ad. Uh, and in a primary, that's what it's all about, cut through the, cl uh, the clutter, uh, be memorable. Uh, and in a race like that, he could easily win with uh, perhaps only 20% of the vote. Um, and so... Uh, you know, some of us might think that adds a little over the top, maybe a lot over the top, uh, and taking it uh, uh, to the extreme. But it's a conservative district in Arizona. Uh, this may play out well in that uh, in that primary and very much uh, earn him the nomination. Interesting fight, too, going on over there in Oakland County where uh, Rocky Ruskowski is going to run against Gary Peters, Rocky the Republican. He's taken it on the chin lately for saying that he won't believe the president's uh, American until he sees his birth certificate. It, it, that's a little over the top, too, is it, or is it? Well, I think, uh, I think Rocky's going to find this out, and we found it out in the campaign that the, uh, you know, the president uh, is the president. He's been sworn in to be the president of the United States of America. Uh, people, I think, have, have crossed that bridge and said, you know, he is the president. Let's move on. Uh, we've got serious problems uh, facing us. Uh, and I think that Rocky's got plenty of ammunition to go after uh, Gary Peters and his record on uh, that will have more substance and more cachet with the voting public uh, than trying to debate whether the president is or is not. Uh, a U.S. citizen. Uh, people right now want to talk about jobs. They want to talk about the future. They want to talk about the deficit. Uh, come on, uh, Rocky, let's go. We can. Uh, you can beat Gary Peters, and you can beat him by going after those issues, uh, the, the issues that are uh, that that will appeal to Republicans, Independents, and even some Democrats. All right. Thank you very much for the chat this morning. We sure appreciate it. Always good to talk to you. Thank you. You bet. U.S. Congressman Pete Hookstra, one-time candidate for governor, maybe. Running mate of Rick Snyder. We'll stay tuned on that one. It's 18 after the hour.